You want to try fantasy footy, but you're a bit of a rookie, so you don't want to put 10 bucks down. Well, now at moneyball.com.au, we have $50 guaranteed prize pools with free entry. Try fantasy footy today. What is up, guys? We are back for another week. Jordan Rankin uh, on the sting. We usually would have called you a half, but you're on the wing <laughs> this year with the Tigers. How you been, bro? It's been an awesome start. Yeah, mate, it's been good. It's been good to be back and, you know, playing first grade footy. It's, you know, what I come back to doing. and, you know, playing on the wing, mate. What can you do? Yeah, NRL's it. NRL, bro. That's it, buddy. That's it. And I mean, how's it, how's it, how's it been for you being back from England? You know, obviously England is a completely different league. Way, I guess, living conditions are much tougher because it's obviously it's not Australia, it's not as nice. But you come back to the Tigers, even though you've you've lost a couple in the last few weeks, you're just still travelling pretty well. Like, it's not like you're losing by thirty. You've been in the game. You know, what's it been like for you? You know, living in England and then coming back to Australia and everything seems to just have clicked for you. You're playing really well. You know, it seems like you're happy on the field. You know, what's it been like? Yeah, mate. Like the two years I spent in England were were a big wake up call. Really, it was uh, sort of a time in my career where I sort of wasn't really here or there. I was sort of yeah. playing a couple of games of first grade, then you know, playing Queensland Cup most of my time at Burley. Um, it was just sort of a uh, yeah, a time in my career where I wasn't, I was sort of in in limbo of what I was doing yep. or where I was going or yep. where my career was gonna, where my career was going. So, mate, I just made the decision to go over to England, and you know they sort of, it was weird. I, I got a, had a good mate over there that um, was playing at Hull at the time, uh, Jacob Miller, and you know I remember getting on the, I was on the beers one afternoon in the off season, and he, um, I ran into him after he'd come back from England for his first year, and he sort of. Um, pulled me aside and said would you be interested in coming over England if there was anything there and I said well I'm not doing anything here mate yeah. so I, you know I'd give it a shot I wouldn't yep. I wouldn't turn it down so lo and behold six weeks later I get a call from him saying that the club's interested and it went from there the phone call from the coach and um, the first first offer they sent through I just didn't even think about it twice so I got the offer in the afternoon and by the night I made the decision I was going to go to England and oh wow Fuck. yeah it was pretty quick but mate as I said like I, I remember getting to England and um it was like eleven o'clock in the morning, and it was like minus three. And like the drive, the, the drive to Hull is about two and a half hours from the airport. So it's yep. literally from Manchester to Hull. There's like nothing in between. So I remember just getting driven by by an old fella from the club, and I remember just looking around, going, "Fuck, what, what have I done here? What have I got myself into <laughs> oh, here?" Man. So and you went by yourself. As yeah, well. yeah, went by myself. So I spent um, you know two of the best years of my life over in England by myself, and yep. you know had a great time, mate. Eh? Like I really enjoyed my footy over there, and. Fell in love with the game again um, when I was over there. Played a consistent amount of footy over there, and mate had a great time. I loved it. And uh, what was it like with Visa? Like, how was it your grandma that was Pommy or? You no, know, nah, mate. It? it was. It, I've I've got my grandmother's mother is Scottish, so yep. the generations obviously go back a little bit further. But the club just paid for my visa to go over there, so they had oh, an okay. allocation of of overseas players that are allowed in, in, yep. in the team. Um, and they just classed me as one of them, so they paid for my visa to go over there and mm. and get everything underway. So I, I did the whole preseason with the Titans. So I made my decision earlier on, yep. but the visa obviously took about six weeks for it to come. So okay. the Titans were happy for me to stay there and do the preseason, and then just when the time come, I just okay. jumped over to England. And I mean, how was it the difference? Like, what was the difference between the English league and the Australian league? You know, not many players have really spoken in depth about. I guess a quality difference is it the, is it as drastic as people see, or is it as just a different type of game? Like, what's the difference? It's, mate, it's a different type of game. I think yeah. um, you obviously see the, see the World Club Challenge. It's probably as close as comparison as you get to the World Club, like from yep. the Super League to NRL, is the World Club Challenge. And I just think it's it. I loved it over there because it's an attacking based game, and it's really you can learn so much about your game over there in an attacking in an attacking yep. sense, um, and. Yeah, it's it's. Do you think def- the rules uh, kind of promote that? Is oh, hundred percent. Like okay. twenty meter taps is the same rules, but they have that where if you get a knock on and the and the opposition team picks it up, it's play on. Like it's free flowing. They want the game oh, okay. to, to keep moving, and there's still one referee over there, so there's still the quality of refereeing over there is a lot different to what it is here. Everything's yeah. not stopped as much as what it is. Like every game's televised here. Where yeah. over there, there's only two games televised a week. Oh, okay. So okay. a lot of it comes down to referees and touch judges making calls and. You know that can throw games or win games or controversial oh, okay. calls. So that's why it's such an open and flowing game because yep. tries that would be given, no try here, a tries over try, there. That's oh, why okay. score lines are up and down and yep. you know all that sort of stuff. But mate, it's a it's a great. I, I loved it over there. As an attacking player, it'd be fun to play. Oh, yeah. Unbelievable, great time. And um, take us. You're the youngest debutant ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Is is that like a heavy mantle? Like is is it? 
like, you know what I mean? Because a lot of people would say it. I'm saying it, and every, you know, like everyone that would ever meet you in footy would say you're the youngest every time. Is it like, is it strange? Um, not anymore. Yep. It was at the time when people would say that to me. It sort of didn't really sink in until probably you know a couple of years afterwards, knowing that um, they'd change the rules and you weren't allowed to debut anymore until so you'll 18. always be you'll always so be youngest. It was always that when that happened, it was like, wow, well, I'm actually that's that's it, you know. Yep. So. Um, it's something I'm obviously very proud of. Yep. Um, there's a lot of that's happened in between there, and at the time there was a lot that that went on. And um, but it's something that's made me the person I am today, and something I'm really proud of. Yeah. And do you ever kind of you know being way you know you'd be as you grow you get more intelligent? Do you ever look back on it and be like maybe that wasn't the right thing for my footy? Or? Oh yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. It was as I as I said, like I was in Australian schoolboys camp when um, I, when the coach rang me to play first grade. So you would have only been grade 11 then? Grade 11. So I'd played Fuck up in yeah, Townsville man. before a Cowboys game against yep. England and we'd, beat them, we'd flogged them by some ridiculous amount of yep. points. And we flew from Townsville to Brisbane to play the second test in, in Brisbane. Um, and John Carter was trying to call me on the plane ride. So I turned my phone back on and had all these missed calls. Yep. From a, from a, I didn't even have his number in my phone. So I didn't oh, know really? Was. Yeah. So I thought, oh. it was a prank, I thought it was a prank call. Yeah, yep. So, because previously when I was playing for Queensland, one of the one of my teammates rang me on a private number and said that he was a recruitment officer at the Titans and wanted me to start training um, with the full time squad no the, the, the the year like the following preseason. So yeah. I got on that pretty early and I was like, yeah, whatever. So I thought that it was the same guy trying to trying to prank me again. So I was like, <laughs> this is a G up. Like yeah. you, you know, you're talking shit. And he goes, no, mate. What you, when he called you, you said this is a G up. Well, uh, it was uh, Scott Clark, who was the general manager of the club. He called yep. me and I said, no, you gene me up. And yep. He goes, mate, I'll put I'll put Cardi on the phone. And I was like, yeah, righto. So then I hear this, hey, Jordo, it's John Cartwright. And I was like, oh my god, it's that, actually that's him. actually him. Yeah. yeah. So I'm standing there, going freaking out. Yeah. And he goes, mate, um, we'd like you to come back down to the Gold Coast this week. I want you to train a full week at first, um, in the first grade squad and, and potentially play. Um, on Monday night so then there was never a guarantee that I was going to play that night but I had to make the decision whether to leave the Australian schoolboys and just go and I could potentially be just training for a week and and not play through Australia not play at all and or miss out on the Australian schoolboys so I literally just didn't even you didn't have to ask me twice I literally got got on the train from Brisbane caught the train down to the Gold Coast and then started training the next morning so it was oh, far right. out, man. And like at 16 years old, and you weren't just, you know, I asked you earlier, you weren't just about to turn 17, yeah. you were mid-16 years old. Like, I mean, I, like I take myself back when I was 16 years old and like to be playing NRL. Yeah. Oh, man. I mean, what what was the feeling like? Was it, was it excitement? Was it was it fear? Was it like, uh, I guess, I guess well, there would have been two. That when you got the call, it would have been cool to be in the first grade. Yeah. And then there would have been the second feeling of like, you're playing. So what was it like training first? So I'd, I'd played about, Oh, I don't know, nine, ten, twenties games before that, and I'd played really well in yep. those twenties games. I'd gone from playing SG ball as a sixteen-year-old um, into the twenties squad. wasn't even going to play a game of twenties, and then all of a sudden we get injuries and they play me, and yep. then we went on like a nine-game winning streak. So, yep. you know, I was in in the middle of a really good team that had some really good players, and we just were playing really well. As a sixteen-year-old, you think you're bulletproof. So, yep. I'd gone to the first grade training session, and you got guys like Luke Bailey, Mark Minicello. Prince he'd broken his arm but he was around Preston Campbell so I've just rocked up to train and just you know how good's this just oh, thinking you know out. these guys I'd watched the year before I went and watched their first so game so before you got called up you weren't a part of the first grade nah, squad hadn't met any of them Fuck. hadn't met any of them so that is mental. the year before I went and watched their first game against the Dragons at Suncorp yep. and I was sort of like in a Recruitment sort of yeah, like, like a lead squad, like an catchment yeah. lead squad thing, yeah. and that was the closest thing I ever got to even meeting in first grade at the time. That so is mental. So I turned up to training, and um, it was yeah, it was just one of those weeks that sort of flew by. Yeah. Um, did Were you learning up at school? Yeah. Well, did you go I to school? <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't go to school at the time, but we didn't play till the Monday, so it was a long wait between games. Yeah, so yeah. I did the weekend, and obviously. I found out on the Saturday morning I was actually playing. Like Cardi, <sighs> Cardi pulled me aside at the recovery at the um, after the captain's <coughs> run and said, "Mate, you're actually you're going to play." Yeah. So Monday comes around and I'm sitting at home and um, I just 
I didn't um, didn't know what to do with myself for the day, so I actually did go to school. Oh, far out, man! What was that like? Um, it was just crazy. I turned I, I turned up to school, and it was a um, yeah, it was a Monday, but no one knew that I was playing yep. first grade. They kept it, obviously being sixteen, yep. they were like kept it real quiet, but it obviously leaked on the Monday morning that I I was going to play first grade. Yep. So it's on the back of the papers, it's on the news, it's. It's everywhere. So I've um, <clears throat> I've gone to school because I thought that's the most normal thing I can do for myself. Yeah. Is uh, you know go you to sit school. at home and you just wig out. Those yeah, 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 yeah. So I went to school. So I'm at school. I've gone to class. I've done all that till about lunchtime. And um, my footy coach at the time, Rod Patterson, who's yep. a legend, legend of coach, one of the best coaches I've ever had. He pulled me out of out of my third class going after lunch. He pulled me out and said, "Mate." I'm I'm taking you home. Yeah, you got to get out of here. And I was like, why? And he goes, mate, you've got a game to prepare for tonight, so you, you know, you've got to go home. So he drove me home. And, um, yeah, went home for the afternoon and then got ready in the afternoon, took my family out to the game, and mum drove because I was too young to drive. <laughs> yeah, mum so, drove. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, mate, it was an unreal experience. It was really good, yeah. And I guess, you know, what do you, what is your feeling like when you are about to play? Did you... Did you were you playing so well that you were so confident that you were just kind of like, this is another game of footy? Or was it like, holy shit, man, like, I'm 16. Like, I don't know if I'm ready for this. Or were you uh, just so pumped up with confidence at 16 like most 16-year-olds are? No, nah, honestly, I, I couldn't I – didn't, I didn't care. Like, oh, I, was, I, I remember we ran out to warm up um, and the, obviously my Australian schoolboys team came as well. So yep. I'd got my fa- all my family tickets. The schoolboys team came. So I had like a group of – 60 people plus all my friends from school and that all all in the same area so I've gone out to warm up and we're doing this wrestle thing and like they're all waving at me so I'm like waving them back and Billy Johnson's like standing over in the corner and he's like full blown Nazi he is nuts <laughs> yeah. he's just going rank fuck get your fucking head in the game and I'm like looking at him going I'm sorry I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. So, yeah. oh shit yeah so mate it was it was one of those like I was sort of trying to take it seriously but I was like wow how like how cool is this yeah, you know, yeah. all these people watching me like yeah. so yeah mate I remember um, getting in the sheds before we actually played and Cardi got all the boys in and was like boys Jordo's gonna play um Oh, so they didn't know until... Well, they knew, but they, he sort of said, like, I need you to protect him out there. Like, yeah, he's okay. six, I was 70 kilos ringing wet. Like, yep. I was, you know, I was yep. a heart. They were going to target me no matter what. Yeah, 100%. As soon as they saw the team sheet, they're just licking their lips, yep. going, let's get this young kid. So yep. he just sort of got all the big boys sort of to try and protect me and, um, yeah, went out there and... Played all right. They played yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. No, when I, when I come on, I come on with about... I think I come on with, like, 35 to go. So Didn't I you make about, a line break? I chipped and chased my first touch. <laughs> yeah. Wait a yeah. second. I did. I can't. I did not remember that. You chipped and chased your first. It, it was surely it was on. Like sure. Uh, well, yeah, it was. We got the ball back. We got oh, the ball man. back from it, so it was on. Uh, oh, so, oh, I've got to so, get a clip of that. So what, what happened was, um, Kurt Gidley was deep. Yeah. Like he was. It was fifth fifth tackle. We we're in inside our forty, and uh, Corey Patterson and. A couple other big boys were just like, get at him, fifth and last, get yeah. at him, get at him. So I've just gone, oh, fuck, I've got no other option. Yep. So I've just faked to go long, chipped over the top. I think got the ball back, passed to Luke O'Dwyer, and we got tackled. We ended up getting tackled about five metres out from the line. Like, you know, oh, really? That's yeah. crazy, the confidence. The confidence yeah. of a 16-year-old to chip and chase the first uh, touch of a footy. Do you, yeah. does it, does it, do you look back now and it feels like another life? Like, does it feel like, or is it just something that you look back fondly like? Oh, yeah, 100%. I think it's a bit of both. I look back and think what a great time it was and how, you know, a lot of people growing up, a lot of people growing up when I was playing said, you'll never amount to anything, you'll, you'll never play first grade for Oh, me. really? Yeah, wow. yeah, mate. I, and I had that for so long. Like, you, you'll never play first grade. You'll, That's you'll just, crazy you'll to me. You'll just be thrown away. Like, you, you know, you're nothing. You know? What, so, why, why was that? Because, like, obviously you're extremely talented. Um, what do you play like you're mate, I, don't, I don't know it was it was just one of those things that I don't know if it was a jealousy thing or yep. you know just some people obviously just have that they just don't they you know there's very harsh critics out there for every player yeah. you know I just copped it a little bit more than than usual because I didn't make my first rep side till I was 15 so it was like oh, okay you know at that stage when everyone was sort of get it going through the rain so I was sort of stuck there not doing anything yep. and a lot of people would say I would never amount to anything so it was always in the back of my head to prove a lot of people wrong, and yep. I didn't think I'd do it that early. Yeah, um, yeah. But yeah, it was a, it was a great time for me personally um, with yep. the way I was playing, and I suppose 
looking back on it now, I'm a completely different person to the kid that was that yeah. played that night, and in, in so many different ways. Um, but yeah, it's definitely something that's that's molded me into how I look at things today and, and how not to do things as well. Yeah. And I guess you know, going back, what, did you grow up with a lot of opportunity, or did you grow up in an environment where you didn't have that much opportunity, and you were kind of, you know, you, you struggled for whatever you, you know what I mean? Like for example. You know, some kids, they, you know, they go to a footy club, they've got everything provided for them, footy boots, you know, they're at the best footy club yeah. with the best gear, with the best whatever. Some kids, you know, there's like a lot of Indigenous kids, for example, yeah. you know, they come up with nothing but their skill propels them to yeah, it, you know? Um, I was, I mean, I, I grew up with uh, four brothers and sisters. Yep. Including myself, that's five and a single mum. So oh, wow. it, wasn't, really tough. it wasn't the best upbringing you know, with giving everything, like yeah. getting everything I wanted. But my mum always made sure that come February that I was always signed up to play at Burley. And, yep. um, you know, I, and every team that I made after 15 always made sure that yeah, I, I played there and yep. played at the carnivals and made the rep teams and, and all that sort of stuff. So I have a lot to thank to her to for putting me in a position to be able to make those teams yep. because without her I, I wouldn't have got there. But, um, yeah, it was, it was a different different time growing up like I as I said like I was always had probably had the talent to go to a to the to a good level um plus first grade level I'm not quite sure but I sit, sort of didn't realize that I was good enough until I was probably yes yeah, that year 16 I think oh really yeah it was probably that okay. year because I I was signed as a at the Titans when I was 14 or 15 yep. on like you know as a recruited yeah, kid, yeah, yeah. Um, on a you know, I was signed. For, I signed like a five year deal, but it was like only for as a, as a kid, like yeah. you boots and the tr- the track suit, yeah, you know, yeah. just to keep the cr- catchment area all together, like all the kids in the yep, and they just the lock you in area. just so, in case kind of yeah, thing. Yeah, so the, the time I knew that I could make football something was when I was at Palm Beach. I I played open school boys at fifteen. Yeah, so which is really young, which is really young. But yep. I played with guys like Kevin Proctor. Um, oh, okay. Jordan Rapana, guys like that, that were the biggest things going to school. So they're the kids you look up to, going, "Wow, yep. these kids are like unreal." Like Darius, Darius was a year before me. He stayed back a year. Yeah, yep. yeah. So he was he graduated with the year I was in year eight. So two yep. years later, I'm playing as a 15 year old wow. in the side that he was playing in. So him, yep. Stevie Michaels, guys like that, those are guys I really looked up to. Yeah. So that was a time where I knew, wow, if I really apply myself, I could something I could, could happen. Yeah, yeah, I could do something from it. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy that like everyone has this kind of different, different like strange journeys. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not so. It's not so black and white as people kind of assume. I yeah. mean, I had similar people when I, I would. Ne- I hadn't played any footy until I was like, like, what was I? Seventeen in year twelve. Year twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know the confraternity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And he, like, so I got like scouted by like a few clubs, and I won play with most potential. And I still had guys like people in my grade telling me nah you, you, you know when you're as good as guys like yeah. Darius Boyd and Stephen Michaels you'll yeah. never make it and, yeah, I was like, and then obviously you know two yeah. years later I was playing and, and, and mate, it's, it's a tough it's tough man because yeah. you know you've got this dream you had this dream ever since I was five years old that I was a massive Broncos supporter like oh, I was, really? I'd cry when they lost <laughs> games like you know I'd, yeah. I'd sleep with my Broncos jersey on and my Broncos hat on every night oh, like, really? it was crazy Far, it was yeah. crazy how like you know how infatuated I was with the Broncos yep. and Darren Lockyer and guys like that and um you know, when you've had this dream ever since you were a kid, like I remember every time someone said, what do you want to do when you finish school? Footy. I want to be a rugby league player. Oh, really? I want to play, yeah. play for the Broncos. I want to play NRL. Yeah. And when you get to a certain age and the, how cutthroat it is and, you know, you're 16, 17 years old thinking, yep. Fuck, you know, I really want to make this what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and people telling you, you'll never do it. You're not good enough. You don't I just have, never get that talent. mentality, eh? You know, and it's just one of those, like, you either listen to them or you don't. You, don't, you yeah, either yeah. keep pushing and believe in yourself, or you can let them let them win. And fortunately, yeah. I just you know kept kept plugging away and yep. you know, eventually got where I needed to be. That's where I reckon sport is so important for young kids. Is like it's teaching them that having the will to kind of continue whatever it is. You know, like you're always in sport. Competition is so important in your development as yeah. a kid. Yeah, for sure. For um, sure. So yeah, so so you make your debut and you, you play really well. Uh, what was I guess what was the, the next kind of few weeks for you, what was it like? Because, I mean, there's nothing... No one else would have experienced that. So there's no, yeah. other, there's no other kind of, I guess, North Star to guide you. You know nah. what I mean? There's no other kind of like... So, yeah, what was it like for you? You had Carmichael a few years before, but he was 17, yeah. nearly turning 18. Yeah, yeah. So after I played that game, I went back to the 20s. 
Yeah. Um, and it, w- it was really weird because I played the game. I went to school on the Tuesday. So after I played on the Monday, I went to school yeah. on the Tuesday. Were you layering up? Oh, Please yeah. just say a little bit. Just yeah, say a little bit. Bro, I would have layered up yeah, so No, hard. it was one of those where I, di- I didn't know how to take it all because yeah. it was, you know, as a kid, like, you know, I've just played a game of footy. Yep. And then you've got cameras in your face. You've got people wanting to talk to you. You've got media ringing yeah. up. You've got, you know, all this sort of stuff. So I've gone to school the next day thinking well, we had recovery. So I, I've got been late to go to school because we yeah. had recovery the next day so, so you I've make gone, a scene when you do come in well yeah because you're late like. yeah and because we'd had all the media at, at re- the recovery where we were yeah they'd, my mum picked me up <clears throat> and they'd followed us oh wow to school wow so they followed us to school so I'd get out of the car at school and like all these cameras get out of the car like everyone's yep. at school and I'm like going oh well kind of like semi-embarrassing yeah semi-embarrassing yeah. and I sort of just want to go to school like yep. I just want to sort of get everything back to normal yeah but it never, it was just always, never went back it never, to never went back to normal. Like, you that's know, true, was, that's so true. It was in the papers and, you know, then then all the the next big thing. The hype you comes. Know, and then, yep. you know, it was like. Had you signed with the Titans? Like, re-signed yet? Um, no, that, I was off contract. Oh, wow. That's, <clears> that's the, good. I was off contract. So then the Roosters, it was yep. like news of the Roosters wanted me and the Cowboys wanted me and this and that and the other. And oh, really? like, you know, every day, like I was big on like getting, the, you know, as a kid, like going, growing up, get the paper and you'd open the sports section straight away. You yep. just read, what the read what's going on. And it happened, it was just like nearly yep. every day for the next couple of weeks, it was me about what I'm doing, where I'm going. Especially on the Gold Coast because yeah. it's a smaller area as well. And, so like, and it, I, you know, I'm not going to lie, it was like, oh, how cool is this? Yep. But then it starts to, you, I didn't realise till the year after when that, you, that the dust had settled that year. Yep. Um, I wasn't even. I didn't even train full time the year after with with the first grade squad. I, they, oh wow! They made me train twenties. What? That's that's strange. They they may as well get you in there and like. Yeah. Well, I think it was it was probably to, to keep you grounded yeah. and just you know you had that game, um, and and to be honest, the Titans weren't going that that well uh, that yep. year. They had a couple of injuries. Princey broke his arm. They were getting like eight thousand out to the home games. Like yep. it was really to Tough me thing. put bums on seats. Like yep. if they play a kid, you know, you're yeah. gonna get an extra couple of thousand there to watch the watch the game. Yeah, okay. And put bums yeah. on seats. And yep. it was probably a learning curve for me to put me back training with the twenties yep. and just make me work my way back. So yeah. which is fair. I, I understood that and I didn't I didn't, you know, question that at all. Like I just, just thought did that, it. you know, that's where my progression was gonna be anyway. Yep. Um as you know, I was only seventeen then. So you So you think, didn't have anyone in your ear going, Oh, you like you know, like is managers coming in your ear saying, Oh, you can do better than this or um, or you'd or you'd re signed and you were kinda of just content. Yeah, it was it was one of those where I could have gone to the Cowboys. Yep. Um and I could have been a backup for Matty Bowen because I think he had a knee Rico at that okay. time and was coming back from that and they didn't real didn't think he would, how he was going to sure, come yep. back from it sort of thing. So there was you know, whispers there. I could have gone to the Cowboys and played fullback. Yep. Um, or gone to the Roosters and done a similar thing down there, probably in the halves or I don't yep. know, whatever. But I was determined that I was 16 at the time, never never been outside the Gold Coast. Yeah, you love the place. Ever, so I was I had all my family there. Yep. Um, so I was just going to – I was adamant I was just going to stay on the Gold Coast. So And at that stage, um, wasn't that year, but a couple of years later, my dad got really sick. Yep. So it's sort of – you know, I had all my family there, so I thought it was probably better for me yeah, just to yeah. stay, just to stay put on the Gold Coast and just, you know, I had a I had a good opportunity. Yep. Well, I thought to play first grade there. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I just continued to train in the twenties, and then, yeah, it wasn't until the year after that I, sort of realised how tough it was going to be for me. Yeah. Um. Obviously, you know, I started the year in the twenties. I played, a, you know, we played some really good games at the start of the year, and then form started to drop from the team and from myself, and then. The, the negative articles that I never yep. had before started to come out in the papers, like the boom youngster failed to live up to yep. expectations, right. blah blah blah. It's crazy. You're and only seventeen at this time. Uh, seventeen, still, you know, I'm year twelve at school this this time, <laughs> and like you know. Then you've got your, your peers at school yeah, also yeah, that'll yeah. be reading that yeah, stuff yeah, too. Yeah, they're reading that as well, and yep. it's like people ask me questions, and you know, it's it was one of those where I'd brush it off pretending it was nothing but, but it did. the longer I didn't deal with it and the longer I didn't know yep. how to deal with it the more pent up it got yep. and the worse it got because that year I'd probably played 
yeah, it was 2000, 2009, 2010 were probably the worst years of footy I've played. Oh, really? Just because of my confidence was just at all time low because I was just not getting a look in at first grade whatsoever. Wow. And so so were you training first grade squad the next year? The year or after no? I was. Yeah. yeah, the year after. That was my first pre-season and I didn't get off the best start. I turned up late to my first <laughs> um, full-time training session, which was <laughs> That's not a good interesting. Start. I was um, at schoolies. Oh shit! Well, I was I was at schoolies. So what happened was my girlfriend at the time was at schoolies on the Gold Coast. Yeah, I went. I had my um, graduation. Yeah, a couple of days before. So we obviously had graduation, had an after party, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, Everyone was yeah. going to schoolies. So me and a couple of other boys that were training full time as well. We thought we'd go to the first night at schoolies, and then you know have a good time, go home early, and we've yep. got training the next day. So we thought, oh, well, that's, you know, we'll be right. So I've stayed at my dad's place, which was, you know, not far from training at all. Yep. So I've got back there, gone to sleep at a normal time, um, looked at my schedule, knew what time I had to be up for training, all that sort of stuff. So in the morning, I get a phone call from my girlfriend at the time and said that she was feeling sick or something and she needed me to come and get her. So this yep. was really early in the morning. Yep. And I've gone, sweet, no worries, I'll come and get you. Um, you can just... Stay at home while I go to training. Yeah. So I've gone to get her. I'm in surface, traffic everywhere because of oh, schoolies. No. And I get a call from Steve Murphy, who's assistant coach at the time, who, who was a teacher at, at my school. So I've known him for, since I was like 14. And he goes, mate, where are you? And I'm like, what do you mean? I'm, I'm, like, I'm, yeah. on, I'm on at 10.30. And he goes, mate, you're, on, you're starting weights right now. And I'm like, no, I'm not. And I had the schedule sitting in my um, yep. in, in the passenger seat of my car. So I've grabbed the schedule and had a look at it, and it says I start at 9:30, which is <laughs> so I, I my heart dropped, yep. and I'm just like, oh my god, You're what am gonna I going to do? Me. So I've just turned around and I've just gone straight to training. Luckily, I had my training gear oh, on me. Oh, thank god. Yeah. Yep. So I've just gone straight to training. I've run inside. Cardi's standing there with like you know Matt Rogers, Nathan Friend, Preston Campbell, Scott Prince, like all these oh, big no. dogs that I that I didn't even like I didn't even know. Yep. The only one I knew was Princey. And you did, and you didn't want to be seen as that young upstart kid. No, that, yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, so yeah. I was in a weights group with Princey and, and Matt Rogers. So you know, and he's pulled me in and he's gone. He's just giving me yeah, a spray, spray of like a lot massive time. spray. Like yep. you're training with two internationals, you've come off. You know you. You know, you're one of our better, better young kids coming through. We've got so much expectation on you, and this is how you're going to start your full time oh, career. Fuck. And so I'm like, you know, yeah. quaking in me, yeah. shitting me in the undies. Terrible around. start. So I've gone downstairs, and he goes, "Get on the rower." So oh. I've got on the rower, and he's put me on there for 20 minutes. And I was on the rower for 20 you. minutes and just, just rowing. So I'm just punching it out 20 minutes. Yeah. And I've got like five minutes in and I've just got nothing left in me. And then Matt Rogers comes over and goes, mate, you just got to keep keep the RPM under this or whatever it was and you'll be sweet. Yeah. Had some target I needed to get. So I eventually got it. Yeah. And then he said, you're going to train with the forwards. So I'm in there with forwards with like oh, Luke man. Bailey, like all those yep. boys. And yep. I'm just like, they're going, why are you with us? And I'm like, oh, it's late to <laughs> and then, so they're giving me a serve. Nathan, yep. I was with Nathan Friend. He's giving me a serve, and he's one of the like toughest blokes I've ever like come yep. across. A no nonsense bloke, like you know, and he's just giving me a good serve as well. <laughs> so I've just gone. This day cannot get any worse. Yep. So afterwards, I thought the best thing to do is just go up and apologise, and you know, just put this set yep. the record straight. So I went up there and apologised, and to that to this day, never been late ever again. Oh really? No. Never. It was the best thing that ever happened to you then? Yeah, sort of, yeah. In, a, in, a, in a shit way, yeah. Yeah, never like was. never, ever been late again. Never, never. I'm always making sure I'm like, if I'm an hour early, then I'm an hour early. Yeah. Like, I've refused to ever be late ever again. Yeah, I was, I've only been late once and I was at the Warriors. And I just, I don't know, my, I set my alarm for PM instead of AM. Yeah. And I just missed, oh, uh, you know, I was mate, like, I, got to, I felt like the worst. Like, I got to training and like, had the boys all in the circle. And I was just like, boys, like... I'm so sorry, it, eh? Like it just, literally, oh, I feel there's like no, sick. there's no worse feeling. No, nah. <clears throat> people there's won't understand it because like normal jobs is like you can't, like being late isn't a big deal. Oh. Whereas footy, if you're late, you're a piece of shit. You are, li- <laughs> you're literally like the worst person there for at least yeah. a week because you like, don't respect anyone else and nah, all that kind of nah, stuff. And, oh nah. man, and it was just like to make a first impression. Yeah, oh, that's even in worse. In front of all those boys, yep. you know, after not being there for like a year, oh, uh, it was. 
Yeah, it was. Oh no man, I'm feeling your pain. Yeah. And then you got to go home, and your missus would have been blown up because you didn't pick her up either. Yeah, well, I didn't speak to her, so <laughs> so I've done my weight set, like got flogged on the rower, done my yep. weight session, gone and apologised, got in the car, and yep. I've gone, oh shit, I didn't even didn't even yeah. like ring her. Didn't so, even ring her. So I've had to get myself through that one. As well, <laughs> so it just wasn't a good day, yeah, mate. It terrible day. Wasn't no, it couldn't get any day. worse. And uh, so you know, walk us through the next kind of few years you, you did end up playing more first grade but yeah. it was in and out of first grade you know you'd yeah. play good you'd, you'd drop out what was that like what um was... yeah it was a struggle mate like i'd honestly just trying to find some consistent form in my game like yep. you know uh it was trying to find my feet where i belonged where where uh what position i was best at because i'd played fullback i'd played in the halves i'd yep. played in the centers you know i'd played in a couple of different positions through those couple of years yeah I didn't know where I belonged. Like I honestly yeah. didn't know what my what you and, I, were. and I wasn't I wasn't getting any closer to knowing where I belonged either. Yeah. I had all I had all the skills to be a, a half. I had the running game to be a fullback. Yeah. But none of that I had didn't have the consistency to be either. Like oh, I okay. didn't have that consistency. So it wasn't a it wasn't a case of like you know maybe coach wasn't really giving you like this is what you are and we want yeah. you to stay there. Yeah. Well, I never got that. I never yeah, I never so. got that because I'd I'd gone from fullback to you know, half in a, in a year, I do that probably five or six different times. Yeah, <clears throat> some coaches just don't realise how yeah. massive that is. And yeah. and I thought being confident in my abilities, like I knew all along what I was capable of. Yeah, yeah. But it was a frustrating time because I could not. I just it was there, but I just could not get it out. Yeah, and it gets mentally. You yeah. just you're like, you know, for example, right now in your head, you're like, I'm a winger. I'm rocking yeah. up, and I'm yeah. a winger, and that's it. Yeah, and I'm going to do what a winger does. Yeah. I'm not going to do what a half does. I'm not no. going to do what a fullback does. I'm going to do what a winger does. Yeah, yeah. And it's, so it's um, but yeah, a lot of people don't like you know fans. They may not realise how hard it is to play multiple positions oh. because it's just a mental. I, I tell you what, now yeah. I I can I know. Th- Five or six different positions. That's a like, good thing. By the back, yeah. on the back. And you're only 24, so. man. It's 24. Yeah, mate. And that's something <clears> I can, you know, I, I, I'm proud of, know, of doing because yeah. now I've got the the knowledge of knowing so many different positions yeah. that I know that if I stick at one or, you know, whatever, which one is the best one for me, I'm yeah. sure I'll find out at some stage. Yeah. But I'm, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I've, I've just had the opportunity to try those different positions and now I know which ones I feel comfortable in and which ones I don't. Yeah. So, yeah, those those couple of years were really hard for me. It wasn't until 2011 that I got back in the first grade team. You debuted at not nine or ten? Nine. 2009. Uh, 2008 I debuted. Debuted, okay. And Same 2011. I know. Oh, 2011 was the next time. It was halfway so through the year. Two, two and a half years two later. Two and a half years. Wow. Yeah, so I was, that time I was 18. 17, yeah, 18. And That's I, crazy. I played, and I played fullback that night. Oh, really? So I played fullback against the Sharks. Yep. Um, and we weren't going very well. Yep. <clears throat> um, but that was a good game for me. I, I, you know, I went out there and been, had so long out of the game and did not, I didn't do a bad job, but I, hadn't, I didn't know the full gist of fullback. The, yeah, defen- yeah. the f- defensive part of my game that year, playing fullback, was, was shit. Because you just like, didn't know. I didn't know, I didn't know what to do. Like I didn't, stuff. Yeah. I could catch Fullback ball. is a very special position. I could catch I could catch balls, but yep. I just couldn't put myself defensively in the spots that I needed to be to make yep. tackles. I was always like so much more deeper than I needed to be. Yeah, like I didn't okay. know how to shut down space. I didn't know yep. how to, you know, read the play to know where I had to be at the right time and yeah, stuff like that. Okay. So I, I ended up playing like eleven games consecutive that year, which was yep. really good for me. Like I was like, oh, I'm finally getting back to where yep. I wanted to be. We finished, but we finished wooden spoon. Oh, so, fuck. Yeah, shit. yeah, it was yeah, a shit yeah. ending of the year. You know, we got beat by Parramatta in the last round. Yeah, we were coming second last, <laughs> and they flogged us. Oh, so man. you can imagine how good we were feeling yep. at the time. And I guess it's not like Titans were going <laughs> through a rosy period either. Like nah, as a club, like they nah, were going nah, through that. That issue. was a time we built that yeah. the center of excellence, and it just got taken away from us. And we were training out of different places what was that like when that all happened oh yeah just it was tough not on the players the players were pretty sweet we yep. just didn't know week to week where we were going to train so That's we were training deal. out of Burley training out of here or there or, so you, you never know. really knew if you like you didn't have a home base kind no of no no home base so we were travelling to different places you know, every couple of weeks training in different areas because people didn't want us training there direct their field for weekend yeah. games and all that so oh, yeah. it eventually got fixed up and we moved back in there and it was it was great yep. um, but for that time it was a you know but to me like we come last but I wasn't I was wasn't thinking about coming last. I was thinking I've got myself back in the picture playing first grade, yeah, which playing is where I tried to be for the last two and a half years. Yeah, 
Um, <clears throat> and so the, the the next off season, I trained f- the whole off season at fullback. Yep. That was where they wanted me to play. They wanted yep. you were going to play fullback. Were you feeling much better then? Yeah, oh, 100%. Yep. Like I trained the full season, the full off season there. I had three months with, with uh, Princey and uh, Will Zimmerman was going to play at 5'8". Yep. Um, and I was going to play at 1. And then uh, we got to the first trial against the Broncos uh, and Cardi rings me the day before, or two days before the game and says, mate, I'm going to have to play at 5'8 <laughs> because Will Zimmerman's gone down with a back injury. So I was like, um, I was like, mate, sweet, I'll do it, no yep. dramas. Uh, so I got into the trial, played really well. Yep. Played really well that week. They kept me at five eight the week after against the Cowboys, which was our big trial before round one. Yeah, like the the big yeah. one. Um, and I started the year at five eight, and I'd had <laughs> I had two weeks there. <laughs> so so I've come bouncing the season. We're playing the Cowboys up in Townsville round yep. one, and I'm like bouncing the season, going, you know, I've got good form my defence yep. is pretty good at the moment like you know we'll see ready to go. rumble ready to go and Zilli yep. end up slotting back to fullback <clears throat> yep. so get the round one I'm up against JT oh nightmare oh whole week I'm just the papers are like you're up against JT you're the new <laughs> six of the Titans like what are you thinking world's best player like what's oh, happening I'm going man. man I'm just going to go out there and do my job like, yep. you know, I'm not worried I'm not trying to worry about JT like yep. he's a freak and if he wants to do Put it all over yeah. me every every day of the week. Yep. So I'm just going to try so and do I'm just going to just do my job. Yep. I'm just going to try and do my job best I can. Yep. We ended up beating them that night, eighteen nil. Oh, really? Which was like, but they honestly couldn't play any worse. Like, <laughs> they couldn't play any worse. <laughs> like it was ridiculous. Um, so we got away with that one, which was really good. Yep. And then I played the next five or six games at at five eight. Yep. Got injured. Um, had a couple of weeks off. Come back. Didn't do so well when I come yep. back from injury, and that's when Aiden Caesar signed with the Titans. And then from that yeah, on, see you from later. That on, see you later. So, you know, and then I end up coming back halfway through the year, played a couple more games with him and the halves, and we had a couple more injuries, and we went really well together. Yep. Um, and then I re signed for another two years, thinking that that was going to be me. Me and Aiden were going to be in and the halves because Princey, Princey, was, yep. cause Princey left that, that following that year. Yeah, the Bronx. At the end of that year. So, all the talk was from the coaching staff and everyone, you two are going to be our halves going forward. Yep. So I was, you know, confident, sweet, happy, stoked, ready to go. And yep. then <clears throat> get to the a week before preseason, they sign Albert Kelly. <laughs> so I'm like, I played, I played schoolboys with Albie. Me yeah, and Albie yeah. are really close. I, yep. I spent a lot of time with Engl- in England with Albie. He's yep. playing over at Hull KR now, and I've got a lot of time for him. He's a great yep. fella. You know, me and him go way back. So I knew what he was capable of coming to the Titans. <laughs> I was like. Okay, sweet. <laughs> but I've been here longer. They're going to give me first shot. Yeah, yeah They're get give me first, first shot. shot. And I'll, so, I'll go mad. Yeah. So got through the preseason, got to the trials, played well in the trials. Yep. Uh, then got pulled in the office, and they go, "Albie's going to play seven, and Caesar's going to play six. <laughs> so. And then Albie, just, Albert Kelly had a mad year that killed year. It. Killed it. Killed he was it. like the next. Ah, oh, killed it. <laughs> Killed it! Oh, Unbelievable, <laughs> like best best consistent footy I've ever seen him play. Oh you know? my god! So I'm like, you know, through the year I'm sitting in the grandstand going, oh, yeah, good on your boys, and I'm just really just going, like parties like loving it, yeah. like yeah, like it it's is mad like it was really it. good because yeah, we were winning hard. games, crowds yep. were coming back to the, the team, like yep. you know we were training really well, like the boys were just loving each other, it was unreal. Yep, uh, you know, and the other part of me is going. Like fuck. yeah, selfish party. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's going fuck. Like, what do I? What do I? Do? What, do, what, do, what, do, what more do I have to do? <laughs> what more do I have to do? Yeah, yeah. So then they changed me f- from a half to a fullback in the middle of that year. Oh, um, played fullback, played really well. Yep. Got the call up to play first grade. <laughs> we played Manly at Brookvale on a Sunday Arvo. Two thousand and twelve. 2013 13 okay so yeah 2013 they were pretty do- were they dominant 13 oh, were- Stewart was like <laughs> yeah. form like he, he scored I think he scored three that day and set up another two <laughs> so we got beat yeah <clears throat> so I was like well you know I'm playing first grade I've got yeah. a couple more weeks here because Zilli was out injured so yep. I was like oh this, you know could be alright <laughs> so the next week we play South uh, South yeah. had Sam Burgess who was on fire 2013 2013 was so when they, they were yeah, killing it killing it yep Greg Inglis killing it <laughs> Isaac Luke killing it Adam <laughs> Reynolds best kicking game of the comp that's Off. when Reynolds was a gun wasn't uh, it like he still is but, yeah, like, but still is but his yeah. kicking game like yep. as any as a fullback or, or, or even a winger now looking at his kicking game like it's yep. like oh 
Yep. I wish we had played South two weeks ago on the plane. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, so uh, I played fullback. We played at home on a Saturday night. It had rained all morning. Oh. Um, so I've gone into the game thinking, oh, you know what? <laughs> I'm just going to go out there and just give it... Give yeah, it, like give whatever it, I can do, I can do, yeah. First set, John Sutton puts up this floating bomb, <laughs> dropped it. <laughs> and I've gone, oh, my God. So that, so that was the first set. Yeah, first set. He puts it up from halfway. There's no, no pressure on me whatsoever at all. And I've, you know, I'm sweet under a hobble. I'm like going, yeah, no worries. Dipped away from me and I've gone, oh, dropped it. So defended that set, got the ball back. Uh... I think we dropped it again like 15, 20 metres out from the line, defended the set. Yep. Isaac Luke gets our dummy half, puts a kick in. I fumbled in the end goal. Oh, my God. So two touches, two errors. Um, put the ball down, uh, drop out, and then I think they score the next set, so it's 6-0. Yep. I've had two touches, two, touches, two, two errors. errors. And then third, third time, Adam Reynolds gets the ball, bang, puts another one up to me. And like I'm going, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! I just see, I can just feel these, just everyone coming down on me. So I've just, I've caught it, <laughs> dived, dove to the ground, just bang, just copped knees in the back. Yep, like yep. I'm just like, this is not going to be a good night for me at all. <laughs> so South on fire. Sam Burgess has scored two, run through the line. George Burgess has scored one, I think. And yep. in the second half, same thing. Like they'd put a bomb up. Um, I was sweet after that. Like I, you know, got up from all, but I was just getting pumped all just night. Smash, yeah, yeah. And then next week got dropped, and that was the end of my Titans Titans career. Oh, right out, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it was it mate. It was really tough. Like yep. it was going from position to position. Uh, not did definitely not my confidence around a bit. That's for yeah. sure. So, um, but you know, to be honest, I'm I'm very grateful for the opportunities that the Titans gave me at the time. And yep. to even play one first grade game was a goal. Yep. But I think after I'd missed so many years, my goal was just to get back. Get them get back, yep. and I and you know I did that not in the way I wanted to, yeah. Uh, with game time, with games played and scattered throughout the, my career. Still so stuff. long though, like you're 24. Like. Yeah, and mate, it feels like I've been, you know this was like my ninth preseason or something, first grade preseason I've done, and it was just like it feels like I've been around forever. But yep. it, you know it's something you know I've only and I've only played like something like 26 first grade games. But it's crazy. It's, it's crazy just, to think that, eh? Hey. Yeah. Did you ever think was there ever a time we like? Maybe this is it. Like this is it. Maybe I'm just done. Like when when your mate spoke to you from Hull, yeah. Were you in a in a mental space of like this is kind of it, man? Like I'm just over this, or were you like I'm just going to continue? Just well, uh, well that was the year Albie Albie played really well on the back of that 2013 year. He was you know obviously yep. killing it, and um, Zilly was the inform like he was our full, the fullback of the club, yep. and I went through the preseason training really well like I'm a really good trainer I like to think I'm a really good trainer like yeah. I do all the little things right I yep. train my ass off every single day in the preseason just to think I, if I put myself in the right position you would take the chance yeah and I, and I do everything right that yeah. it'll it'll work out for me I have faith that everything I do will work out for me yep. um, and then when I got the call to go about the England England um, team I just <clears throat> I sat down with my mum and I just really looked back my time at the Titans and I had a few opportunities to go to a couple of clubs before that yeah um, one of them was the Dragons the year before where I could have gone halfway through the year but it sort of was there but it, and then it sort of just fizzled out and nothing ever come of it yep um, <clears throat> and I had opportunities to leave and I always said that um, I was adamant that I just wanted to be a one one club man I wanted to play at the Titans because oh, that was really? my hometown and that's what I wanted to do yep um, so I, I knocked back to go on to so do you reckon that cost you opportunities 100% it did yeah. 100% like the Dragons I think that year signed Sam Williams and uh, Josh Drinkwater so there was like inexperienced halves there so you really could have had a shot yeah down there, I yeah. could have had a shot but I just yep. didn't go and I kicked myself every day like yep. for those couple of years afterwards that I didn't go yeah same with me with the Dragons as well when yeah. Wayne when Wayne left in 2008 he said that I could come down with him and I went to the Warriors I'd already agreed like that's a longer story yeah. but yeah similar situation yeah so I, I kicked myself every day thinking oh, I should have gone I should have gone and yep. I didn't go and I was no more experienced than what I was two years previous you know yep. so it was an opportunity that I look at it and I sat down with my mum and I was she was like what are you thinking yeah and I just looked at her blank in the eye and I said I've got to go yeah I have to go yeah I have to go because that was the only option I had to um 
to live my do my career, like yeah. to play rugby league because I had one more year left for the Titans after like that year coming. So and they were just never going to really give you a crack. I would have probably played four or five games yep. at tops that year. Yeah. Um, knowing you know hindsight, you look at it now. That year, Albert Kelly played five games all year. Yeah, okay. And I'd thought the year before, he had no injuries, played every single game. I thought, yep. there's no way I'm going to play. Yeah, but in yeah. hindsight, he never played and I probably could have stayed. But yeah, but in saying that, like sometimes yeah. clubs, they get an idea of a player <coughs> yeah. and there's nothing you can and, do and to that's, change it. And that's that's what I had in my head. I was like, I just have to go. So yep. I agreed to the to the whole deal straight away. I didn't even second guess myself about it. Um, and it wasn't until a couple of days later that I was like, wow, I'm actually going to do this. You're going to England. To, when I had to announce the playing group at the time that I was yep. going to go. Um, so I had another, I, had, I still had four or five weeks left with them before I took off to England just in, um, just after January. That's a long time to second guess yourself. Was there a lot of second guessing or? Um, it didn't, I was like, I still got five weeks. I'm just going to train my ass off here, yep. preparing so myself go to go yep. over there and play. So the Titans were really happy like with me and they were really good in that way to keep me there since I'd been in the club for so long and keep yep. training with them and just keep myself ticking over and, you know, probably doing a more intense pre-season at the Titans than what I would have been doing yeah, in England 100%, anyway. Yeah, 100%, definitely. Um, so I stuck it out. I got the call New Year's night. Oh, so, <laughs> New Year's night. So I can't I'm believe like, you remember it. Oh, barely. <laughs> so I get the call saying, visa's been approved, like we've got you on the next flight. And they wanted me to fly out on the 1st of, first of January. Oh, come on now. That's a bit, that's a bit so tough. So I'm like, come on, I'm like going, come on, mate. Like, like yeah. It's 2 o'clock in the morning here. Yeah, yeah. You've got to give me a bit more time. Give me a couple more days. So he said, yep. "Yeah, no worries. We'll give you to the third or fourth to fly over." So yep. I was like, "Sweet, no worries." So I literally went home next day, packed all, got got all my stuff together. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. And next thing I know, I'm boarding a flight to to England. And um, just when I got on that flight, I was just like, "Wow, I can't believe I'm actually doing this. Like, this is I'm gone now. Yeah, yeah. This is this is it. This I'm, is it. I'm, I'm getting into it." So it was a very daunting time. Like, was I'm, it lonely? Oh yeah. Oh. Like, I, yeah, I, walk us through those first few, first, first few months. Like, because when I moved down to just Wollongong yeah. and I was by myself, didn't know anyone, living in an apartment by myself, it is lonely oh, as fuck. Yeah. So I can't imagine going to England. Yeah, so it was... So I went from Brisbane to, like, Hong Kong or wherever I was. So I was in the middle of nowhere by myself, like, catching connected flights and yep. by myself with all my luggage. and 22? Yeah, 22. So still fairly young. Just, like. turned, just turned 22. Yeah, so you're still fairly young. So I uh, got into Manchester. It was like minus three, minus four degrees. Um, a guy from, uh, I was told a guy from Hull was picking me up from the airport. So I'm looking around for a bloke with a sign or something. Yeah, just yeah. let me know that they're picking me up. And I'm like, there's no one here. So I've got all of my bags. Like I've got my whole life packed in like four bags. Like, And I'm just like, oh, what am I going to do? I've got no English money. I've got nothing. Far out. So I eventually see him, you know, Jimmy's a great, great fella, drove me all the way to Hull, which is like two hours from Manchester Airport, and I just remember getting in the car, and it's just drizzling with rain, like, it's just, you know, miserable. Oh, bro. And I'm just like, fuck. Like, I'm just looking at the window going, what the fuck have I got myself into here? Oh, my so, God. Got to... What's Hull like as a city? I don't know. Is it small? Uh, every, like, it's it's a small city. It's a small working working class man city, so yep. you've got all the fish, fisheries and that there, so all the seafood comes in from Hull, and... Mate, I loved it there. Like people used really? to say how bad it was and what a shit place it is and all this sort of stuff. But the time I spent there, the people there are just an amazing bunch of people. They made me feel so welcome as soon as I walked in there. And yep. um, great set of fans, mate. They were just unbelievable. Like the time I spent in Hull was, was will go down as probably the two best years that I had um, personally and with my football so far. Do you feel like it's it was because they bought you in this confident way, like you're going to be out, like you're going to be our fullback. You fullback? No, I played. I played halfback the first year. So you're gonna like, you, but you were bought in a confident way. You yeah. Know? Like you know how like sometimes you're bought as a like, maybe we might play. Like yeah. you're, you're a second tier, but some people you know cl- clubs will be like, we you're our you're our you know big buy or whatever. Yeah. Well, the thing was with it that my whole career prior to like before probably 2008, my whole career at the Titans was, you know, I don't know. Where I, where I belong here yeah. like I don't know if I'm if they really rate me I don't know if they're just saying it to my face I don't know if you know and yeah. that's no shot on, on them as, as people but yeah, yeah. that's just how I felt and I, I, yeah. couldn't, I can't help that and when Hull signed me that was the first time I felt like I be, I'm going to belong somewhere yeah. 
and they'll they back was, you. Like, they'll back me. They yeah. backed me 100. percent And they said, "This is where we're going to play. This is what we're going to do, and yeah. we're not going to budge on it. This is where we want you to be." So, so I had, it means so much. Oh, right? it, mate, it does. And I had so much confidence in that that it gave me confidence. So I was like, "I, I could actually do something here." And yep. I'd seen Sammy Moa, who's at the Roosters now, who's one of the best front rowers in the NRL. Yeah, he's killing it. He did the same thing. He he played, I think, two first grade games, and he went over to England and played at Hull FC, the same yep. club I was at, and absolutely killed it. Yep. And then come back to the Roosters and won a comp. Yeah. Oh, man, so I was crazy. like, I had I had that in the back of my head, thinking if he can do it, and he's done so well off the back of it, that I can do it too. So yeah, I went over there. I met the boys. Um, and I played that weekend. I was they had a uh, a trial against Bradford. Yep. Rules that weekend and they weren't going to play me they were like mate you just come off of a flight yeah, you're still jet lagged um, don't worry about it and I was like no nah, mate I'm going to play Like, yep. I want to make first impression I didn't want my first impression to be me getting here and thinking that Kinda I was here like, for a holiday and not, yep. and not playing so I played um, <clears throat> only played 40 minutes uh, scored a try and, and, and played pretty well so yep. I was you know, from then on I played the start of the year and again it was sort of like one of those things where because I'd got there so late, I was still learning plays and still learning yeah. the gist of how they play over there. And you know, obviously, mm. still trying to understand half of what they were saying. Like, I couldn't understand a word they <laughs> were saying. Play pommies. Oh, mate. I try, <laughs> even at lunchtime, they're trying to talk to me, and I'm just like sitting there going, "I don't know what's going on here." What? <laughs> like, you know, they got sick of talking to me because they were repeating themselves all the time. Yep. So, um, yeah. So there was a few Aussie boys over there as well. So it was really good to, you know, mix with them. And as you know, like when you're playing different teams and stuff, you always see the Aussie boys and there's even though you don't know them, there's always a connection there between yeah. between the Especially Aussies. Especially players, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So you you know you have a little you know have a bit of have a bit of a chat with them and see yep. how they're liking, and you can sort of you know go go off them and see see what's going on. So um, yeah, the first year was a was a good year for me. I played a lot of a lot of footy, which is my goal was to do over there, yep. and um, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it I was homesick though. The first yeah, like to walk us through what was it. What was the, t- the toughest time? When you think back, like, you know, when I think back when I first came down to the Dragons and, like, I think of tough times, you know, I've got a few images in my head of tough... Like, what was the toughest time for you and how did you deal with it? Um, my toughest... The toughest time was probably the first three months. Yep. Um, I just... The weather, I just hadn't been used to oh. it. My family was so far away. Yep. Um, and towards the back end of that year, my my grandmother got really sick. And... Yep. Um, that was really tough for me because I'd lost my dad in 2010. Yeah. Um, and that was easily the, the toughest moment of my whole life. Like, yeah. it, you know, that that sort of shaped me into the person that I've become because the way I deal with things now is more, I'm not going to let anything beat me because if I can get through that yeah, with yeah. my dad, then nothing can beat me. Yeah. Um, so, so 2010, that was the year that you struggled with your form? Yeah. So, I mean, like, two and two together, obviously oh, that's going to have a big f- effect. Well, the my dad was a massive, massive part of my football in life. Like, yeah. he wasn't so much a footballer, he was a really talented cricket player. Okay. So he never really... He was never the one to um, make me do things or make me play footy when I didn't want to yeah, or do okay. anything. He was always that guy. The one thing that ever stood out in my whole life yep. to this day about my footy is that if I was struggling with anything I'd just ask you tell him what's going on he'd go yep. mate do you still love the game do you still love what you're doing and yep. I'd say yes and he goes well there's your answer yep. you know, so I always take that with me if I'm loving my footy and I'm enjoying what I'm doing mm. I play my best footy so and that'll that, that'll be the day that I know that I retire yeah. it's the day that I don't love the game anymore Yeah. Um, and so yeah losing him was the hardest thing I've ever had to go through um, but I'm thankful because <clears throat> he'd been there through my whole my whole career to date, and he got to see me play one first grade game, and that was oh, the, really? that was the day I debuted. So oh okay, and so you would have been 16. <laughs> yeah, and so, so like any other way in a normal person's career, you wouldn't have got a chance because you would have been 18 uh, when he passed away, yeah, wouldn't you? Yeah, so he saw me wow, play. It's amazing, 20s, but he'd seen me play one game of first grade. So I'm very thankful for for that opportunity. What well, that's crazy because that that all worked together. Look, like that. That's that's what I mean when. People say you're thankful for the opportunity. I'm thankful for it in, in a different way because yep. my dad had seen me play nearly every game growing up. Yep. Um, as a kid, you know, he worked away and every chance he got to come and watch me play, he'd come watch me play. And for him and my mum to be able to see me play in my first game, game of NRL, yep. 
growing up knowing that's all I wanted to ever do um, and that was the only game you got to see me play it's crazy you know that's something do you I'm, feel like it's kind, it was kind of meant to be like that led you to that moment to debut at such a young age for your dad to see you you know run out in that jersey yeah you know, you normally uh, I think so because he wasn't the most um, vocal person he was one of those guys that would whatever he said you knew it yeah. was you know you knew it meant something you know yeah, what I mean because he would say very he would say very little and I just remember after I played that game I remember him and my mum hugging which they ever never did it because they were divorced oh really and he just said you did good you did yeah. good and so that was something that always stuck with me and yeah. yeah when people say you know it was a special day and I go of course it was a special day like mm. no one knows that like I've never never told that to anybody oh, but. Really? Um, yeah, that was the only time he's ever seen me play first grade, and that's the why it's so special to me. So. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. That's so that's and him being a good cricket man, he, cricket, you know, sportsman, he yeah. would understand how hard it would be to achieve. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Like he yeah. he never put any other pressure on me. Always was yep. there when I needed him, and he um yeah he put so much. Yeah, just gave me so much belief in myself, yeah. and that's something that. I've had to learn to get from other places now because yeah. he always had this calming effect on me to know that yeah. everything's going to be all right and everything's going to be okay. And yeah. um, you know, I've had to source that from other places now to to sort of get that get that reassurance. Yeah, it, it kind of like it, it from the outside looking in, it kind of adds everything together. You know, because a lot of players that, have, that would have been the same path that you've been down as in going to England, yeah. coming back to NRL, a lot of players would have just faded away because it's just a bit too. T- you know what I mean? It's yeah, a bit yeah. too tough. But it seems like you know that. You, that belief has kept you in the game yeah. and kept you confident that eventually I will be back and I mean look to get back yeah. in the NRL playing on the wing yeah. playing good footy as well and, and, and that's the thing mate like the, the amount of bad times I had in England where you know you know, I'd have a shit game here or yeah. there or whatever and I wanted to come home or I hadn't seen my family in 10 months and yeah. you know, I wanted to see them or whatever it was you know I always kept in the back of my mind I'm doing this for a reason yeah um and the reason was that I wanted to come back and play first grade. I wanted to come yep. back and play in the NRL, and I wanted to, I wanted to be able to not not prove that I don't I don't have to prove anything to anybody. No, like, that's no, not what yeah. I I used to think that like that was a massive thing for me is that I have to prove everybody wrong. Like, yeah, I have to yeah. prove the person that down the road that said I couldn't play first grade. Yeah. Or the person that said oh, I'm a, a shit player that I've got to prove them wrong. Kind but, of grow out of that. Yeah, I've got to yeah. you know it's a that, and that's a maturity thing. Like yeah. I don't I've just got to prove to myself that. You know, I can achieve the things I want to achieve and yep. put my mind to it. And you know, I knew that if I did half as good as I knew I could over there, yep. that I'd come back and I'd play first grade. And you know, and fortunately enough that I've had the opportunity to come back to the Tigers, and yeah, yep. it's been it's been really good so far. That's yeah. crazy, man. What it like? It's so so interesting to see you go away, you come back. What was the what was the pinnacle, England? England, and then we'll obviously come to today. But what was the pinnacle of your England kind of you know? Career playing wise, yeah, playing wise, or just everything, just everything, um, you know, something that you remember is like that. You know, this is why I'm here. This is why. I'm, this is why probably I the, there's a big derby over in England, Hull FC and Hull KR, yep. which is they're two town, they're the same town, two teams separated by bridge. Oh, okay, <laughs> like by bridge. That's I'm cool. talking yep. like Origin, so New South Wales, Queensland, like yep. how much they hate each other. These really? guys hate each other more. Far out. Like I'm not like, even. I'm not are they, even do they have like hooligans and shit. Oh, mate. <laughs> Like I'm not even kidding. Like uh, Hull KR's stadium, there's like um, they have like fences yep. lined up there, so your Hull FC supporters would sit there or sit down the other end of the stadium. They're not allowed to sit together. They can't sit together. Really? You'd have ten year olds spitting at the Hull <sighs> FC supporters, throwing bottles, throwing glass. Like what? Pe- people have kids, but these kids are known from from when they're born to to hate them. To hate them. I hate. Like I'm not. I'm not so it's not like a friendly origin. No, hate. no, 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 no. This is you know New South Wales and Queensland supporters can sit together. Ha, you know yeah. Queensland, New South Wales. Yeah. You know, and you have guys that really take it personally. Yeah. They, they hate each other. What? Like, hate each That's other. mental. Like, brawl, so they punch like, on everything. Brawl. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Far out. Yeah. Like it's unbelievable. So it's playing, playing in these derbies where it it means more to them that these games winning these games than anything else means more to them than anything else. Oh, yeah. Like that's what they want the whole year. They I don't care if you just lose every single game in the whole yep. year. Just beat you just come last. Like if you just win two games or three games against them, it's all that matters. So I was lucky enough to be in a in a in a Hull FC team that beat them twenty eight nil. Yep. Which is the oh, first time it's ever happened. Really? And then we beat them last year at their home ground to 
knock them out of the top eight. So oh, that was for us God. to go to the top eight and them to get go yep. down. So it was like probably the biggest game that they've played in a long, long time. Yeah. And so we we won that game and I, I played pretty well that day as well. So yep. there two days after the game and you have your fans there and you yep. know, you're into someone else's territory on the other side of town. Like you're getting on the bus and they'd surround the bus and shake the bus and throw stuff at the bus. And what, and, spitting at you? Throwing, oh, yeah. Their bottles, everything. Oh, mate, they hate you. Far they don't right even out. know you. They would know you from a bar of soap. But they hate you. So even if they've seen you on the street, they'd oh, hate you. Yeah, hate you. Bar yeah. Just because you wear just because you wear different colours, like it's unbelievable. Crazy. It's it's literally like like EPL. Yeah, hate, yeah. Hatred, like, like it's legit bad. hooligans and yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's bad. Bar And yeah. you wouldn't like the bridge separated the, the two parts of town. Yeah. Being a Hull of Sea boy on the on the on one side of town and and um, you know you have Hull KR, you wouldn't go over there. Oh really? You wouldn't cross the wow. bridge. Wow! Like outside of footy, is it? Is <laughs> like as in they still hate each other? Nah, nah. Fuck. Yeah, you go there. Like I just, there would be nothing for me to go over there. Like I just wouldn't go. There, <laughs> just wouldn't you know? go and, there. I, and I didn't know. Like yeah, that yeah. was from me just being there and people telling me don't go over there. Shit! And so you'd get like. Do any run-ins? Any of the boys have any run-ins? Like, was there any uh, stories that, that you that they say look? Well, this is there a was story. a couple of Hull boys that had grown up in Hull, lived yep. there their whole lives. That were Hull FC that had played there for 12, 15 years, but lived on the other side of town because that's just where they'd always grown up. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> so they, they'd cop cop it all the time, full blind hate, and it was just one of those things that you know, <sighs> yeah. I look back and laugh. You laugh about it because it's Jesus, it's like it's, but it's legit though. It's legit, yeah, like it's, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Fucking mental. Yeah, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. Um. That is fucking mental. Yeah. Right? Uh, so, has anyone ever like signed from like? Ah, uh, yeah. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So Shannon McDonald, they used to oh, play. Oh, yeah, the fullback. Yeah, from yeah. West Tigers. So he he started at Hull KR. Yep. And went across to Hull FC. Is he still playing footy? Yeah, he's over at St Helens now. So he's been he's, over there. Is he doing well? Years. Yeah, he's doing good, man. He's playing fullback Fuck, over there. Fuck, I might so go so. over fucking England. And play yeah, some mate, he's doing he's doing good over there. He's doing good. And another guy, I played with um, Mickey Payer. Oh yeah, Mickey Payer. Yep. Yeah, he. Um, he went from Hull KR to Hull FC as well. And they just hated him. I hate him. Oh, hate far him. out! That's hate crazy. Him. So that's he gets like a he gets like a bad reception every time he goes really? back there and oh, plays. Man. Yeah, so it's that's like a big no no. You yep. just don't don't do it. And if you do it, you're just gonna wear the consequences like, for it. So. Yeah, it's like roosters and rabbitos to a lesser extent, to a way <coughs> yeah. way lesser. But extent. But like when I I'd heard about this rivalry before I got there because obviously I did my research on the club and yep. found out about the supporters and all that sort of stuff and. I had a couple of mates, old family friends that were from England, and they were Warrington from Warrington, and they told me about this derby, and I was like, "Oh yeah, right, whatever." Yeah, like, whatever. I played, I played the Broncos, Gold Coast derby, yeah. like, like, <laughs> down the road. Whatever. <laughs> and then they, they're going, "No, seriously, <laughs> this one you'll never understand yeah. what it is until you get there." <laughs> so my second friendly, like friendly trial game, yeah. was a, a derby. So they had like a, a, oh, a trial shit. game against each other, and they yeah. pack out a stadium. So like twenty five thousand to a to yep. a trial game so I've walked down the field and I'm getting absolutely sprayed <laughs> and from that moment on like I looked look forward to those games yeah. because like you know you just give them a bit it of it means something yeah it means something to yeah. them and you know you get to play in front of all these people that are just so passionate about this game yeah. Yeah. and that if you scored a try or did something yeah and like gave him a bit of cheek or rubbed yeah. at him a bit mate you'd not hear the end of it <laughs> like I had what happened one day so we I scored a try. Um, oh, the game we beat him twenty eight nil. So yeah. we've gone up twelve nil, I think, and um, I've put someone over for a try. And I've just gone right up to one of their players, and I'm just right in front of him, right in front of their their stand, right in front of their stand. And all of a sudden, you see this red smoke flare come on the field. So there's smoke bombs just gone off in the field. What? They're throwing bottles at me. They're like, you know, it's just like next level. <laughs> So and shit. yeah, they, they, yeah, and they, shit threw, yeah. they threw a red flare on the field. This is about probably oh, 10, 10, 15 minutes to go in the game, and they're just throwing a red no. flare on the field. So we had to stop the game for the security to come on and you know throw the flare off the field. And that is mental. Yeah, bottles are being thrown, and it's oh. just like it's crazy. Yeah, so yeah, it was different experience. Good. <laughs> but yeah, it was mate, it was unreal. Yeah. It was unreal. Um, and how did West Tigers come about? You know, like what was what were, did you? Use, do you have a manager that yeah. looked for it and yes. you just kind of said that so I was originally going to stay in England for another three years I was going to stay over at Hull and, and stay there I thought I was playing good footy over there and um, you would have been used to it by then yeah, as well I, I yeah. got accustomed to everything over there I met so many new people and yep. had my own place and finally felt comfortable being there by myself and um, yeah I was loving it and then um, that was all but done and then last minute 
some stuff hit the fan and it just wasn't working out. There was some different things that were going on, different players were leaving, different yep. players were going and, um, you know, injuries and stuff. So they had to sort of restructure what they were doing and where they, where they saw their team going. So I was sort of left in limbo with probably six weeks to go in the season. Um, after turning down probably five or six different deals from clubs over there. Oh, really? And a couple of clubs here saying that I was going to stay in England. I, you know, so I'd you would have been them. a bit filthy with them then? Well, yeah, yeah because yeah. I was like, I'm, I'm going to commit to you guys. Um, yep. I'm going to commit to Hull. Uh, sorry, I can't. Like, I'd spoken to a couple of people. Like, oh, sorry. And Hull had kind of, I guess, not officially offered you something, but said, this is what we're going to kind yeah, of yeah, yeah, verbally yeah, agree. Yeah, and, yeah. and so I'm talking to my manager. He's like, yep, sweet. You know, yep. we're getting this done. This is what it looks like, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, sweet, no worries. So I'd gone into the stadium thinking I was going to sign a deal um, to be told that they weren't going to weren't going to offer me a contract anymore. What? Because they were restructuring different things. So I was like, oh my God, what am I going to do? So Are you like, ex- like, excuse me, but like, yeah, what is going yeah, on yeah, here? Yeah, yeah. I, just, I brushed all I was, these offers. Yeah, because I was playing really good footy at yeah, the time. Yeah. And, um, and I, mean, I thought it was all, all but done. I was happy there. I was playing yeah. good footy. And, and you were your best in England. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the best. You'd have been one yeah, of the best players there. Yeah, so I was like a bit shocked, taken back by yeah. it. Like it would have been all right if they had told me this three months ago. Yeah, when, when you had all the offers. All, because it was... Now I look back on it, it was a really slow process. Like it was just felt like it was taking forever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden Gareth Ellis um, did his Achilles in one of the games. So they he was like on the verge of whether I stay, whether I go. And he was like our captain, our you know, yep. he was the best we had there. Yep. And so they were like, mate, we need all the money we can possibly get to, to get him. someone to obviously if he doesn't come right, to oh, take over okay. from him. So right. they went and bought um, Frank Pritchard and Sikamanu oh, okay. from here, so I was I was like, oh well, can't really. Say so they, they about that. Like, instead of buying you, they bought two other, like yeah, two yeah, or three yeah. other players. Two or three other players. Yeah. So I was like, oh well, you know, I was filthy because it left me high and dry. It cost you money. Well, yeah, exactly. Yep. So, um, I was my manager's like, don't worry, mate. Like, we'll, I'll get some, we'll get some sorted. Like, there's yep. plenty of opportunities out. And you've there. had that those two years of playing good footy. So yeah, yeah. Got, yeah. You know, so I was, I was pretty confident that you know something was going to come up. So I was, my mum was stressing more than I was. So I was yeah. she was, you know. What's going to happen? Where are you going to go? You know, yep. Are you going to come back home? I was like, I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just going to have to wait and just That's the good thing about like tight. when you play good footy, yeah. you, you, everything's usually sweet. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Like if you were playing not so good footy, yeah, then you would be stressing out a bit. So I was just sitting tight, just still yeah. playing good footy and just you know let my footy do the talking and, and just going from there. So um, I got the call <clears throat> one night. It was like midnight. Um, and my manager rings me and goes, mate, I got you a two-year deal at the Tigers. Yep. Um, do you want to take it? And I was same thing. I was like, Yep, didn't even think about it. So I was just like, yep, sweet. Because my goal, and I wrote down a piece of paper before I, when I got to England, I was like, well, what are my goals in the two years I want to be here? Like, what do I yep. want to achieve? And it was like, you know, be the top three players at the club. Yep. Um, and eventually one of the goals was to gain a two-year deal back in Australia. That's what oh, I okay. want to do. So that come, that come, and I was straight away, yep, I'm taking it. Uh, <laughs> so I ring my mum, and I was like, mum, um, I'm, you know, just sign. A, I'm just about to sign a deal, and she goes, "Where to?" Now this is going to be a bit better because my mum is a huge Tiger supporter. Oh, really? From like Die Hard back in the day, That's like sick. huge. Went yep. to Balmain Tigers last game at Leichhardt when they played Parramatta in two thousand in uh, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, really? Like, That's crazy. Rain, like crazy. It's, so all these things like meant to be. Like, yeah. Isn't? So ever since I was growing up, she's like. I just wish you'd play for the Tigers. I wish you'd play for the Tigers. I'm going, Mum, I'm never going to play for the Tigers. Like, Broncos not, all day. Yeah, Broncos all day. Even yeah. when I was at the Titans, she's like, yep. I just wish you'd go to the Tigers. I'm not going to the Tigers. Like, I hate the Tigers. I never, I never hated them, yeah, but I just, yeah, just to say to her. No, she watches every game. She's yep. like, you know, all, loves the Tigers. like crazy. Yeah. So um, but I go, Mum, I'm coming home. And she's ecstatic, loving yep. it. I'm coming home. Like, she goes, where are you going to go? Where are you going? And I was like, um, Going to the going to the Tigers. And like the phone went silent. It went silent. I'm like, Mum, Mum. She's like, started crying on the phone. I'm like, why are you crying? She's like, because you go to the Tigers. She goes, I'm more excited about you going to the Tigers than you coming home. And I was like, oh, cheers, <laughs> cheers, Mum. That's yeah. a diehard. She should she should get like a one of those like special memberships or whatever. Yeah. So inside. she um, when, when I played the Tigers a couple of times in first grade, she um would come to the game in like just normal clothes, but she'd like have a jacket on and wrap like an orange scarf around oh, her. Really? So she's sort of like going for the Tigers but she's going for me sort of thing yeah 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 so she, yeah she was wrapped with me going to the Tigers and um, she got a jersey 
Right? Yeah, Jersey. she's you know she's come down to the first game and yep. you know she's awesome. she's all she knows the ins and outs of everything yep. that's going on there. So she's more in, awesome. more in touch with it all than anybody else. So she's loving it at the moment. Yeah. And uh, I guess it's a, a more of a personal question. You obviously you don't have to answer if you don't want to. But um, after the games, you got you you get in a huddle with a few of the boys. Yeah. Uh, and you know have a pr- have a prayer. Ha- yeah. I mean how uh, I guess how important is you know your faith to you and. You know, it seems like there is a little community within the NRL that has kind of got together, you know, and just, I guess, yeah, like a little religious thing. What's, what's yeah. it, I guess? It... Um, for me, it's for me, it's it's probably a bit different to um, a few of the other boys. Like, yeah. you know, a big contingent of our of our Polynesians and Fijians, like Kevin and Guava and guys like that, they, they do go to church yeah. um, regularly throughout the weeks and on weekends and stuff like that. Um, I'm really close with those guys. And my faith is, is something that um, has always been pretty personal to yeah, me yeah. And it's more more for me to be able to I don't know spiritually keep in connection with my dad yep um, you know I'm a big believer in th- everything happens for a reason and I know that he's looking down on me and same with my yep. grandmother and you know all that so I'm a big believer in you know that those people are there looking after me and looking after my family and, yep. and making sure that you know I'm on the right track and, and in saying that you know I, I do believe in believe in higher power and, and I believe in God and um yeah, as I said, I think it, you know my future's there for me to have and there for me to take, and it's all mapped out for me and ready to ready to go. You know, all being that you know I, I take it upon myself and, and achieve yeah. those things. So, you know, I, I yeah, I've got a a way that you know I, I do a prayer with the boys before the game, but it's more about well, wishing the best for every 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 player that goes out in that yep. field. Um, and just talking to my dad, making sure that he's he's on my side and, and he's with me no matter what. So it's cool that you, you know you guys can openly just do you know you know what I mean. Like yeah. it's cool that you have that connection. You know that's something that all kind of unifies you and you's, yeah. you it, do it, take it, that moment. A, it's the first year I've actually ever seen ever seen it really happen. I think it's yeah. the first year that many have done it. Like a lot of boys will do their own prayer before a game. Um, you know, by themselves in the change yep. rooms, and I, I I did that all the time. Like I was always a big believer in yep. doing that. Um, and this year it's just more become that we'd all get together as a group and, yep. and, and do it. We've got a really good a really good pastor in Brendan Brown that, that you know that's a that's a young he's a young pastor that comes to the group and yep. he um he he hangs out with us all the time and he's always around if you never need a lending hand, not just for the boys that, that do have that faith, but just people Sorry, in general. Well. So um, I think you'll find that a lot of clubs do the same thing and um, yeah, it's a big inti- contingent of the, of the NRL now that are doing it, and I suppose it's cool, it, man. Yeah, it's cool. yeah. I mean, whatever people believe, you know, they're yep. more than welcome to to preach that any way they want. So yeah, yeah. Okay, so last couple of questions, bro. We ask this to oh, not we, but myself. Ask this to every player. Yeah. Favorite rapper of all time. Favorite rapper of all time. Um, if you're a rapping like if rapping is your thing. Oh mate, uh, I'm gonna have to say Eminem. I yes, think, I think just because I grew up, I grew up listening to him. I've mate. watched Eight Mile. I've done all that sort of stuff. So like listening to his songs, yeah, like about his life and what yep. he's gone through. Like I reckon it's just legit. Like he's just been mate. You know, there's no one. There's no one lyrically more talented than him. No, I just think he does the way the way he, the way he gets his you know mate. he gets his word across and the way he just you know he, name name unreal. another person that sounds even similar like even close and for white guy as well. Yeah. 100 like percent doing it in uh, completely in, in, in industry yep. in, by by African Americans. Yep, like he's just he's, made he's it number his own. one, and, he, and he, I reckon he changed the game when he when he yep. when he first 100%. started as well. He's so it's like can't go past him really. Hundred um, percent. Favorite favorite movie of all time. Uh, favorite movie. Uh, bit old school. Uh, Roadhouse with Patrick Swayze. Roadhouse. Yeah. Is that again. He's a. Um, He's a bouncer. He runs oh, like really? a, he comes goes across the country. And he's like a bouncer, and he falls in love with this girl. And it's a classic. Hey? It's a classic. It. Yeah, it's unreal. That in it. um, weird movies, mate. But I like uh, Once Were Warriors. Once Were Warriors. Yeah, 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 yeah Once Were Warriors. Movie. That's so a sick movie. Yeah, love those movies as well. That is so. a sick movie. Pretty cool. Um, they reckon uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but I think I read somewhere that he like was he struggled with the character, the guy that played Jake DeMoss or whatever. Like yeah. He fully struggled with it. Like if you if you read it up on or something like that, he yeah, he had issues with actually playing such a bad guy. Oh really? Yeah, they reckon he's a like a real, real nice guy oh, or whatever. Yeah, I watched that movie when I was real young like not real young, <laughs> yeah. but I was probably in my early teens. Yeah. And like seeing that is Hectic. just like oh, biggest eye opener ever. Like oh, some man. of the parts of it I'd i still today just go like, Oh my god, yeah. I can't watch so it. So hectic. Yeah, hey. it's crazy. 
Um, bro, it's been awesome, man. Thank you so much for coming on. I no appreciate worries, it. Mate. It's uh, Yeah, I love seeing that you're playing again. You're back in the NRL on the sting, but, you know, who knows where you'll end up. You could end up in the forwards, fuck. Right, you never know, you never know. So, um, yeah, mate, I'm happy playing on the playing on the wing at the moment and see see if I can score a couple more tries. And, and Yeah, uh, you're, what, you're uh, third or fourth on the, the... Yeah, mate, I think, you know, up there, getting up there. So, yeah, mate, if Teddy, if Teddy keeps feeding me the ball and, you know, so close to the line, you know, who knows what we, we can do, but we definitely need to start getting some wins, that's for sure. All right, bro, thanks for coming on. Appreciate it. Cheers, thanks for having me, mate. That's it. Cheers. All well, good. You want to try fantasy footy, but you're a bit of a rookie, so you don't want to put 10 bucks down. Well, now at moneyball.com.au, we have $50 guaranteed prize pools with free entry. Try fantasy footy today.